arrived at Mudawindi Gorge, 3k hike, pretty easy hiking, but the gorge, just stunning. There's some swallows over there, flying around as well. You can imagine the water cascading down these walls. Just grabbed a few images, put on the six stop ND filter and the four stop soft edge graduated filter to try and keep the sky a bit more even and also to smooth out this water there is a bit of debris and other crap floating around in it so i've just done that quickly and there's bubbles out there now yabbies maybe So just leaving Little Windy Gorge, the main water hole behind us there. Really nice spot. You could go for a swim if it was warm enough, apart from the fact that unfortunately there's a dead goat floating in at the moment. Um, but there is a whole series of secondary pools as well, which we're just walking back towards now. It's a 3k odd walk each way. Not hard walking by any stretch. In fact, some might argue very easy walking pools. Here's those secondary pools. They're a bit low at the moment, obviously. And that's the view back up the main gorge. On the banks of Lake Pamamaru, just outside Menindi, we've been driving through a horrendous dust storm all day. Uh, but I'm hopeful that the dust that is over that way, over towards Broken Hill, is going to result in some sort of orange glow as the sun sets. Um, we're now probably five minutes after sunset. Uh, so I'm hoping once it gets that nice low glow, orange glow as the sun does, it's not just after sunset, it's gonna light up the sky. Uh, but even if it doesn't, um, I've got my shot set up here. All the dead trees. In the or mid ground, I guess. The sky is gonna be my background. Um, and I'm going to chuck on a six stop ND filter so that I can slow my shutter speed down uh, and try and smooth out this water because it is still very windy here. It's been blowing about 50 k's an hour all day. So I'm gonna try and yeah, slow that down, smooth out the water and hopefully get some nice silhouettes of all these dead trees. So I've just put that six stop filter on and currently am taking a 30 second exposure F11 ISO 64, no colour in the sky to really speak of, but I'm hoping, might even turn this into a black and white actually. Um, yeah, let's do a black and white, that'll look good. And I'm hopeful, hopeful that I'll be able to smooth out this water. It is windy as I said, so these trees here are gonna look a little bit blurry, but they're not my subject. Those dead trees out there are my subject, so that's all I care about. And they are perfectly still, because there's not a leaf to be seen, barely a branch, so they should look. I've just changed my composition slightly, uh, gone from almost 16 mil out to 35 mil, and I'm basically framing only those dead trees out there. Got bulb mode going on again, currently at 30 seconds, I'm gonna stop it at about 45, um, and hopefully this will be some nice smooth water and a nice clear shot with the silhouette of those trees and turn it into a attractive looking black and white. We've made it to Mungo National Park. This is the site that Mungo Man was found, who was apparently buried in the sand out here, or the sediment out here for about 40,000 years. We've just come to a place called, I think, Red Top Boardwalk. And we're walking out now through, I guess, the, what's the southern end of what they call the Lunette, which is essentially the eastern bank of what used to be Lake Mungo. It would have, in its time, been a massive sandy beach with, you know, a massive lake off the, off the shore. And this is the sort of scene 
we're looking at. Apparently this is the most severely eroded section of Lunette in the park. But if you ask me, that creates some pretty nice textures. Just been walking along the boardwalk here and uh, taking a few handheld images, trying to I guess, scope out a composition. We're probably, must be half an hour, 20 minutes or so off sunset now. And there's a couple of nice wild, little wildflower bushes. I'm not sure what they are, leading into, um, I guess, erosion gullies. And that's what this section is all about. It's all about the erosion gullies and the tracks of the sections they form. So exactly like this sort of scene here, with the bush in the foreground and leading out through the erosion gully. And the sun setting over there, obviously. But this is the boardwalk here. You can see a few mates having beers down the end there. And I've just been, yeah, as I said, walking around using the camera handheld to essentially just scope out compositions, see what might work, what might not work. And just looking for a nice sort of leading line leading off in the distance because in this sort of image there's no there's no subject uh, off in the distance. No no background, no mid-ground, it's just a very, very wide former lake or dry lake. So all of your interest, I guess, is in the patterns and textures in this foreground. So I've been trying, I mean, you're up on a boardwalk, so it's limited, but trying to get down low. Um, it is a very fragile, I guess, ecosystem, in that if you get off and go traipsing through it, you're gonna cause damage, and if everyone did it, the whole place would be ruined. So do stay on the boardwalk, um, as we're doing now and I'm just gonna, yeah, keep scoping around, try and find some compositions. Got on my four stop soft edge ND filter. Um, I figure the foreground's gonna get dark very soon, as soon as that sun dips below that horizon and the sky is going to be much brighter so I'm going to try and even out the tones using that filter and I'm still undecided on the composition which is the worst way to be just before sunset but I think I'm leaning towards this drain right in front of us here leading out that way it means I'm not looking directly at the sun but I'm banking on there being enough colour over there which is already some purple hues to make it work so the sun's just dropped below the horizon here. I'm just gonna walk back to that little bush with the erosion gully leading off in the distance. I think that's the, the winning composition for this area. I'm just gonna drop the camera here. I might have it lower last time. I might get it up a little bit higher above this bush and focus down. So I've got my composition set up now. Um, it's the same bush and drainage gully as I had before, but this time I've got the tripod set up much higher, almost at eye level, um, which means I can look down further and I can really see that gully leading off into the distance. So I'm just doing, just done a quick focus stack, just close that off. So one on the bush and one further out, because um, what's beyond that is so far away it's never going to be in focus so who cares uh, so yeah this is my I guess key composition I'm going to stick with I'm currently shooting f16 ISO 64 1.3 seconds I'm going to bump that down to f11 quickly and then put my shutter speed back down to about 0.8 of a second. I'm going to do focus on the bush. Like that. And one further out. Like that. The um, wispy clouds haven't lit up as much as I hoped they would, but we've got some really nice colour out there. So that's why I've, I've gone for this composition. I was originally thinking the clouds over that way might light up and we might get some 
interesting color over all those erosion mounds and gullies that way but unfortunately that's not happened so I've focused in where the color is which is obviously that way I might try a quick the uh, landscape composition I don't think it's going to work as well as the portrait land portrait composition but got to try these things so I'll give it a quick go so for the landscape composition I've had to open it right out to 16 mil I'm still focused stacking um, I think it looks okay getting a little bit of color out on the horizon still shooting the same settings as before I'll just close off that focus stack and I think that looks okay so I might show you that one as well um, just starting to get some pinks in the sky that way which I didn't count on I haven't really picked up a composition going that way I might be able to work something with landscape mode actually I'm just moving the tripod while I talk to you <coughs> with landscape so that sorry I hope you can still see me. I'm just adjusting the camera while I'm talking to you I might adjust that so that it's got that sort of composition there I hope you can see the screen there I might slow down the shutter just a touch I might even drop that graduated filter down a little bit further like that and then drop my shutter speed down to about 1.6 focus stack one on the bush in the foreground whoa that's a light what's that going on over there I that's the tour bus. That's got to be a tour bus. <laughs> Far it's, a, right. it's a tour bus or one of us. So down the road at, um, I think, Walls of China car park, it's called, there'd be, I don't know, 100 or so people perched up there plus a tour bus. And we've had this place to ourselves for the last 45 minutes or so. Watch the sunset go down. So <laughs> hot tip for Mungo, don't go to the Walls of China car park for sunset. So we've just pulled up here at Zanzi Homestead, or the ruins of the old Zanzi Homestead in Mungo National Park still. Um, it's just heading towards the sunset now and we've just seen our first pink cockatoos in the wild, which is a pretty special thing. And you probably can't see, but yeah, directly above me in that tree there is what looks like a wedge-tailed eagle with some chicks in a nest. Um, I'd love to show you that, but just can't, unfortunately. You can't see them very well from the ground. So this is the old ruins site. This would have been the old fireplace for the house. The old tank and toilet. And the cool room, or the escape room. So down underground there, they jumped in there when it was hitting the extreme temperatures that it does out here. And went down there to Try and keep cool. So we're going to probably head over. There's an old horse stable over that way. I'm going to probably head over that way with the uh, yards in front of it and uh, try and grab a couple of sunset shots. Might even get lucky and see another pink cockatoo. Major Mitchell they call them. So Mungo National Park used to be part of a really big sheep station. Uh, it was still a tourist attraction. Tour tourists used to come and pay the station owners and go and check out the walls of China, the lunettes and all that. Um, and then when Mungo Man and Mungo Lady were discovered, it got uh, handed back to, or it got sold I guess, to national parks. And since then it's been handed back to the Aboriginals. So it's now managed jointly between the Aboriginals and national parks just arriving at this old horse stable. It would have had an old thatched roof back in its heyday, which I think was 
from the mid 1800s through to about I think 1970s 60s thereabouts but that's it there and then around this far side are all the old horse yards so this is what I'm going to try and make my subject of today's sunset I think this should be a bit of a, a nod to the the settlers out here I guess the ones that ran the, the sheep stations and I guess settled this area for the white man just a good example of our outback history I'm just here at this Oh, here you go. There's a pink cockatoo flying directly towards us. I hope you can see this. There he is. Here he comes. These guys are so rare, so cool. Look at this. How cool is that? Major Mitchell, thanks for the visit, buddy. Just changed my composition as I thought I might. I'm now uh, down, got the tripod down nice and low, the camera down nice and low, and using the texture in that sand in front, the light and shadow of the cross sun. The sun's on a basically a right right angle to the way I'm shooting, uh, and I'm just going to do a quick focus stack: one in the foreground and one on the old stables. And that should get my sandy foreground in focus and also the stable and have a nice sharp image. I've still got probably 20-ish minutes until the sun sets. And that's pretty bright in my eyes still. So yeah, I think I'm going to stick with this composition here and really make... I'm, I'm only... I'm sitting about 18 mil thereabouts. I'm going to keep the camera down nice and low and use this side light to create this texture in this sand in front and obviously this will be in the upper right third the, this that you can't see what I'm looking at this the horse stable will be in the upper right third so that'll be my main subject up there um, yeah and that should be hopefully a nice outback at the moment it's just I've got the uh, hood on to stop lens flare uh, when you shoot either directly into the Sun or at about 90 degrees to Sun to the Sun lens flare can be a problem uh, that's why what hoods are for so that if you're shooting sideways to the Sun it will block the Sun other way to do it is obviously with your hand uh, less reliable can be a pain but I do do that fairly often as well uh, and that's how you stop lens flare so if you don't know what lens flare is it's when you see those bright patches they're often green or purple or something like that and they don't belong in the image don't know where they've come from it's usually just because the sun is hitting the lens directly and that's what's causing your lens I already know this is not going to be any award-winning image it's not going to be amazing the sky is not going to be fantastic don't even care it's just so good being out we're seeing pink cockatoos the first time I've seen them in the wild to be honest uh, so who cares just get out and shoot doesn't matter if you catch a create a masterpiece or if you're just honing your skills or practicing or just enjoying being out here just get out doesn't matter and that's exactly what I'm doing right now just trying a different composition real quick um, the Sun's pretty much gone behind those hills over there but there is still light coming through the uh, I guess formwork the remaining of that roof so I'm trying to get that light coming through um, these fence posts as a foreground. Uh, that's going to be, yeah, just a little bit of an orange glow through that roof I think will look nice. We're heading towards the end of our trip, sadly. So we're just outside Condoblin now um, at Utes in the Paddock. I'm almost certain this used to actually be used in a paddock and it's now been moved, but that's okay. It's just outside of town. And this will probably mark the end of our trip. We only got a 
five hour drive or so home tomorrow. So this is probably goodbye. Thanks for watching and see you on the next one.